challenge. Um, they didn't have a curriculum set in place yet, so it was our job. Department. There I work with Mrs. Jones and Mr. Spring. There is a philosophy behind that so that they grow up to want to stand on their own two feet. Valentine lunch. This lunch catered to our students, the kids, your friends, colleagues, and there I worked with Melissa. Quite a nice calling. And with an insistent um, front runner like Mr. James Woods. Show last year, well, the year before COVID, and then we. English education. So, in terms of the MAC, what started in a modest way blossomed. A farmer told his helper to find the sheep and wrong them up. Later, when the farmer asked his helper how many sheep there were, his helper replied, 50. The farmer said, hmm, there are only 47 this morning. His helper replied, you told me to wrong them up. Education is a right, not a privilege. I am Magdalene Barry, a former employee of the Methodist Agogic Center. The year was 1976. The place was St. Martin. The innovator was Reverend John A. Gums, chairman of the Methodist Church, who is described as a courageous, intelligent, and visionary person, took a bold but necessary step to introduce English as the primary language for education. Reverend John A. Gums remained focused on making English a foundation for teaching students and took the idea to the next level by engaging a strong collective group of educators to help carve out the lane for successful implementation. Some of these individuals including Sir so, Philip Sherlock, Professor Dr. Franz Prince, Dr. Nellie Prince Wrigley, Dr. Simon Barnes, Professor Sherlock, Dr. Dudley Grant, and Mr. P.T.A. Sprockley. The board was later formed of various community leaders and consisted of Reverend Johnny Gums, Mr. Vance James Jr., Mr. Teclo Bell, Mrs. Joyce Duzong Bell, Mrs. Veronica Gums James, Mr. Egbert Lynch, Mr. Clarence Martinborough, Mr. Johannes Arundel, Mr. George Marco, Mr. Camille Bailey, Miss Joyce Bell, Miss Viola Patricia Scott, and Mr. Mervyn Scott. It was January 1976 when I began helping and practicing my accounting skills at Mr. Clarence Martin Burroughs' office, who was then the treasurer for the church. I used my typing and shorthand skills to assist Mr. Egbert Lynch with the church's reports. My skill and knowledge placed me as an essential worker that was needed to help establish the Methodist Agogic Center. As of Jan August 1976, I was officially employed. I joined the team that included Reverend Johnny Gums, Mr. Camille Bailey, Mrs. Neva Edwards, and Dr. Dudley Grant. With the help of some stalwart supporters from the Methodist Church, this educational vision successfully came to reality. In order to nurture the project, the advisor, Dr. Grant, along with Reverend Johnny Gums, recruited assiduous and diligent staff members who understood the project and vision. The project leader was Mrs. Neva Edwards from Dominica, who was an expert in developing projects that Dr. Grant guided in Jamaica Dominica and other islands. The teachers recruited to assist with implementation were Miss Linda Banks, Miss Loretta Richardson, Miss Lucia Hodge, 
from Anguilla, Miss Barbara Lake, Miss Judith Hall from St. Lucia, Miss Celia Stewart from England. They later joined forces with the teachers of the Queen Beatrice Clayton School to help implement the new vision. As the project continued to grow, other teachers and staff members were recruited. Miss Myrtle Gaynor and Mrs. Monica Stimson were also project leaders. These teachers worked diligently to ensure positive production that met the required benchmarks. Sometimes they had no weekends as they attended workshops to advance their set skills on how to use the curriculum to prepare the lesson plans and instructional materials to accommodate the different learning styles of the students, ensuring that each child met their maximum potential. The initial stage of development required a concerted effort to bring this vision to reality. It was extremely hectic, and as I first handedly recall, both federal and island governments who were stakeholders in the process were constantly monitoring our progress. One of our objectives was to keep the staff and parents motivated and happy. Assessments and evaluations were essential. Timely reporting to our government was crucial. Maintaining diligence was our forte as MAC was examined thoroughly. This project would require immense sacrifices as we toiled tirelessly to achieve the objectives and goals. As more and more team members, teachers, and leaders understood and grasped the vision, our school began to blossom as teachers understood the project. The teachers were keen on producing successful students and were very proud of their achievements in the classrooms, thus creating happy parents. As parents spread the good news, this led to the increase in the school student enrollment. With the rapid growth, it became more challenging. I use these challenges as stepping stones to become more qualified. It motivated me to become more prudent. Under the leadership of Mrs. Josie and Fleming Adson, who served as principal and executive director from 1981 to 2000, our institution soared to newer heights. She's often described as a dynamic, strong self-motivator, visionary, and industrious leader who inspired the staff to strive for excellence. Her empathic and compassionate leadership style drove her to empower and inspire her staff and team members. She created a robust and tight management team each of whom played an important role in executing the vision to help the Methodist Agogis Center stay on the map and remain a competitive force. During her astute leadership, our campus grew to four campuses across St. Martin. These campuses are Reverend Johnny Gums Campus in Betty's Estate, Brawler F. Miller Campus in St. John's Estate, Mary C. Bogus Campus in Simpson Bay, and Early Stimulation in Phyllisburg. My qualifications and experiences placed me in an executive position that demanded profound interpersonal skills, efficient multitasking, instinctive tactfulness, and a forward-thinking ability to distinguish and accomplish the goals efficiently. As the executive secretary to the executive director with special duties for the school board, I was responsible for ensuring that the office was managed effectively and efficiently.
by completing each task in a timely manner. Multitasking, organization, and independence were extremely necessary to function optimally to maintain highly positive production. I also worked with Mr. Clinton Spring in the executive office. Mr. Spring served from 1983 to 2013 as a teacher, evaluation specialist, and later became the executive director. He was an expert at testing and evaluation. At present, Mrs. Rose Hughes Forum, who served as a teacher and principal, is now the executive director and is described as strategic, goal-oriented, and optimistic individual who is dedicated to the max mission statement. In addition to the elementary campuses, she is also responsible for the secondary school. My experience over 34 years in this organization taught me how to successfully plan and develop a project to its completion. It helped me to understand the courage and effort each stakeholder and employee had to endure to appreciate how important it was to exercise patience along the way to achieve various goals. It has been a privilege to work with these talented educators. Congratulations to the MAC for obtaining the title, the best school of all. The trendsetter for 45 years. Cheers to the future and continued success. Good morning. My name is Juliana Hart Shipley. I am here to share my history with you at the MAC. I started in 1982-83 as a substitute teacher for Miss Roach. My classroom was in um, Orion School. Thereafter, I also substituted in the kindergarten classes at Beatrice Clayton School at the MAC. And in 1984, I was hired as fully qualified teacher, and I taught at um, several locations. The first location was at the um, opposite the cadaster office. Presently is a sneaker shop. And Ms. Stewart and I were there in grade one. And at those days, we had classes from eight to three o'clock. So between 12 and one, we used to have a break. So we will walk the students up to the Methodist courtyard to have their break. And thereafter, we go back until 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock, we go back for them to catch the bus. I also worked at the section in St. Peter's in the Vlon building. There I had a grade 2. Also, above the... Methodist man's where the office is presently. I also had a class up there teaching. And um, so I worked with several um, principals. First, I worked with Ms. Gaynor, Ms. Simpson, Mrs. Fleming, Mr. Brown, Mrs. Hughes, and the last was um, Mr. Miss, sorry, Mrs. Davis. I um, in Betty's estate, I had I worked there. That was Campus One, and I worked there. But before that, I was acting principal for Campus Three, which was situated in Simpson Bay, for a year. Then I went back to Campus One. I taught nine years in Grade One, and then they they split the schools. Only have two campuses. So um, for the rest of the years, I worked with Mr. Brown and St. John's Estate at the Brawler F. Miller campus. There I was um, vice principal at it with a classroom teacher. 
But after 25 years, they said, no, I will just be vice principal. I also um, had the opportunity to be a teacher's coordinator. Um, also, the last few years, as instructional coach for the both campuses, I direct the choir for over 25 years, and I also was coordinator of the afternoon program. Um, also, we in those days we had a Mac Playhouse, mm -hmm. and um, I revamped it last year, so we had our first show last year, well, the year before COVID, and then we're planning for another one. What I really enjoy is the sports day. Mm -hmm. Oh, those were the good old days when we had to prepare the students for their competition on that day, and so we had several different houses, the blue, the red, the yellow, and the green, and I'm proudly to say I am a yellow house. I'm the Yellow House um, um, captain, and it was really enjoyable to do that. And also, I liked the staff retreat. Staff retreat. In terms of the different chairmen on the while I work, where I worked with um, was Reverend Niles, Reverend John Hodge, Reverend Seaton, Reverend Richardson, Reverend Brissett, and um, Presently, Reverend Patmore Henry. The afternoon program was is in twofold. It have we start with the academic tutoring, tutoring students with math, language, and different um, subjects for the weekend, and also help them with the homework. After that, we have extracurricular activities because I believe that it's not only the academic makes the child, you also have to have extracurricular activity. You have to look at the whole child. So we had different activity like basketball, swimming, dancing, acting, um, art and craft, cooking, um, netball. Yeah, so we had a lot of activities because, and the, the, the students really enjoy that, um, opportunity to be, you know, part uh, at it because of academic. So they like that part where they do other stuff. And the, the parents were happy with the program. So presently, it's still going ahead. I packed it on to uh, someone that I know will do a good job. I also worked um, when this, the, the uniform was beige and brown. And then after a few years, they change it to blue. So that's far, that's a long time ago. During those years, we had, um, we were writing lesson plans and based on the lesson plans, we um, created the MAC curriculum, and which is a very good curriculum to have this high standard. Um, so it, I was proud to be part of that theme and we used to work um, late in the night um, making materials and charts and um, to go along with the, the curriculum. I also um, made a, a phonics workbook that will, goes along with the curriculum. Mm -hmm. it's a total picture. Yes. A total, yeah, picture of, to see, you know, so they can follow it um, better. I'd like to congrat the MAC for its 45 years in service. Those were long, great, enjoyable, educational years. And I hope the MAC keep up with the standard and the most important, the discipline, because many parents enroll their students mainly for the discipline that we had, and of course, for the high standard of education that we produce. Well, I came to St. Martin 
1985, worked at the um, St. Martin Academy and the Mac Elementary School was our main um, feeder school. So naturally, I had an interest in the school and what the students, pupils from there, were doing. And whenever I could help, I assisted in um, helping at the school. So I was close to the Mark, the Max Elementary School. And as the years grew, eventually we started the Mark CSE. Now, I was asked to be the coordinator, but that was such a funny thing because I had about three messages from the late Mr. Spring. He wanted to see me. I said, no, I wonder what he wanted. And he said, he sat and he said, ah, Velda, you are the person to do this for me. I thought about it, not for very long, and took the challenge. Unfortunately, we didn't have many more, many more conversations before he passed. Now, I thought about it. It's a new school. Naturally, parents would be sort of apprehensive, no matter how staunch Methodists they were and how they were connected to the elementary school, to send their students, their children, there for secondary education. So I was not faced by that, but decided, of course, we had nothing. When I say nothing, we are just beginning. Curriculum, projects, everything had to be started from scratch. So I decided, I said, since having my experience from the former school, where I spent over 24 years, the basis forming, I looked at the basis forming curriculum and being affiliated with Kerbin Examination Council for many years in a substantial um, position where correcting of papers were, I saw that there was the CCSLC exam. And it was an exam which catered to students who were coming in with varied um, abilities. So, and very much what the basis forming was trying to do in years one and two. So I decided that we would embark on doing the CCSLC. And then furthermore, the persons who put that curriculum and that syllabus together did so. So we would have a, when a rounded person with a rounded education, plus it would serve. And if we, in the examiner, which is a magazine put out by CXC, there were persons, principals, and teachers from schools in the wider Caribbean who said that it served as a prerequisite. It gave a good introduction for the students writing the CSEC exam later in fifth form. So we did that. Of course, it took a lot of preparation, change of mindset, but it's because it's a competence exam. And I remember that years gone by, I would get calls from persons in the department saying that these students did very well at CXE, um, CSEC, but simple things like writing a formal letter and doing certain things, they didn't know that. And in the English, CCSLC, those were the kind of um, things they prepared the students for. So they were being prepared for work as well as going on academically to function locally, internationally, as, as we say, globally. It was an interesting adventure. And I made sure that, where possible, surrounded myself with persons who were receptive to what we wanted to do, who were capable. So I had a few um, teachers who taught for many years and who were willing to assist because one cannot carry the burden by oneself. And we worked 
as I said, it was a challenge sometimes because you had to then inform parents what is this new exam that the students are writing. They were receptive, first of all, because there was no fee involved. The government paid for this exam. But they would obtain a certificate with at least five um, competencies in English, mathematics, French or, or Spanish, integrated science, and social, social studies. So we prepared them in those areas, and students wrote the exam and did well. And subsequently, I think it, it, it helped them because it was like an extension, the CCS, the CSEC was an extension to what they would have done in the CCSLC with their little research papers and practical work. Of course, teachers had to be trained, and I assisted as much as possible with the training. At times, I found myself one of um, struggling between evaluating and um, giving um, guidance. I because if I went into a class and I gave guidance as to things that should be done, I didn't think, and I saw improvement. I didn't think when it came to evaluating that I should. Um, put that in again, you know, that was one of my, one of my struggles. But it were, I, there was good cooperation from the teachers, especially the ones who have, who would have been in the system and with whom I've worked previously. So my stint was from the August 2013 to the end of the school year, July. 2018. End up making history? Yes, we did, because students wrote the exam and did well. Mm -hmm. We had the first set of students writing their CSEC exams in 2018. And even now, I still feel as though I'm just on holiday. Mm -hmm because I'm always um, want to be involved in what they're doing because you know I have the interest of the school at heart and I think it is on its way to being there for a long time and improving hopefully we would um, we also had challenges with our location because I've had parents, I mean, neighbors, very angrily, I had to pass, come, come to um, kind of be negative about the school being there. But the school, I think, is a good addition to the whole um, Mark family, and a good addition to providing much needed guidance, education for the youth of St. Martin. And mm -hmm. offers that seamless transition. And, the, and the seamless transition. Sometimes I say it's a pity because what happens, what we, we can get too caught up in the cognitive domain and what I think we, when we are teaching, and I think we do forget the affective domain, the, the, the discipline, yes, but you still have to give that care, and I think the school does that and bridges that quite aptly. And my experience at the MAC was, was a great one. It was um, a learning experience, of course, because I believe in lifelong learning, and uh, it has made me a better person, more open to um, seeing ju not just one side, of the coin, as we put it, but varied and realized that there are many variables involved and in making the whole. 
and especially it's not easy to have a staff together so you had to sort of learn about the, what are the strengths and I made sure to use the strengths of each person wherever you were strong make sure you showcase that and help to propel them as leaders as well. To the executive board, management, staff, and students of the Methodist Agogic Center, yes, the MAC, congratulations on this your 45th anniversary as an institution of learning. Wow, 45 years. That's an entire generation plus five. By God's unerring spirit led and with your commitment, perseverance, and hard work, you have reached this glorious milestone. Through the Mac, you have shaped, molded, and touched the lives of many persons who have gone on to and will continue to go on to being productive citizens of the world as they fulfill their purpose. As you begin this new chapter, I encourage you to hold fast to your vision, mission, and the purpose for which you were founded. Education from the cradle to the grave with God's guidance. May you continue to grow and excel and remain relevant and innovative as a premier institute of learning. Once again, congratulations and God's continued blessings.